Welcome to Our Composecast, where we discuss productivity, self-hosting, career professionalism, and innovative technology. Here to bring you the latest from the open source ecosystem and beyond is yours truly, Andrew Syriac, and with me is my co-host, Jack Moore. How are you doing today, Jack? I'm doing well uh, this evening. I'm doing very well. Uh, a little bit of a debacle <laughs> and some technical difficulties on your side, but I'll tell you what, I'm doing all right over here. You want to kind of... Uh, just quickly touch on wh what happened, what, what's going on over on uh, your side. I noticed you got some uh, new apparel for anyone watching on video or who's seen the uh, picture. Here. No, no, I don't, I don't want to talk about my, <laughs> my headphones. I'm salty about it and I have to use wired today and that's all I got to say about that. Oh, come on. I'm telling you, wired headphones are not that bad. The quality is just so much better. It is really nice. Like the, the quality is very good. Um, I do miss kind of like the, the freedom and the the spatial awareness I get uh, wearing yeah. the wearing the on ear ones it's it's a lot better. But I mean, you could uh, this is this has always been a tried and true method of zoning in, if you will, um, just just kind of encasing right yourself in in like an, an on ear or an over ear headphone and, and just kind of getting in the zone. I love the on ear and I have the in ear. I have uh, those AirPods, mm. which are fine. But anymore, I love my like cheap pair of wired headphones and they fit perfectly and guess what they don't have to charge i don't have to pair them i plug it in the audio jack it works and i'm off yeah for as long as there are audio jacks oh oh no <laughs> fair enough fair enough <laughs> but i'm excited for today's episode we have uh quite a bit of news today and then we're gonna what talk about can board and then dive into a little bit of uh a little bit of grab bag we'll get into that later i got i got plenty of news to run through so let's just go ahead and hop on that absolutely let's do it yeah so the, so the first one is is podman uh, 3.0 has been released for whoever doesn't know we uh obviously use docker uh, as a core piece of our technology and uh, docker is in implementation of a kernel technology like it's a it's a user space implementation of a kernel technology uh, so there's nothing to say that you couldn't get other user space applications that did the same thing uh, and in fact that is exactly what podman it is it is a competitor if you would to docker and it implements the same kind of functionality in, in a different way actually one of the cool things about podman is that it doesn't use a daemon it can be run completely as a user um, without the need for root privileges or or a system daemon so uh it's it's pretty cool uh it's developed mainly by red hat it has been working its way to feature parity with docker yeah i was gonna say i think this uh 3.0 i was reading has that uh docker compose feature so really it's just picking off features as as they develop and just kind of matching it to a degree and i feel like the more and more we look at it, Docker was kind of first. It has a lot of great features out there, but bit by bit, I think we're starting to see, you know, more specialized services and functionality from different different software just coming out. Yeah, and it does come down to use case as well too. Like if if that's something you're worried about or running a system daemon, then yeah, you would be looking into stuff like Podman or, or different other uh, uh, runtimes. We don't necessarily need that functionality right now. I mean, we're, right. but were we to need to, this is a huge step forward because you're starting to hit that feature parity with, with Docker, you know, if, if you're Podman and hitting that feature parity includes implementing the equivalent of Docker Compose, which is stuff that we use every single day on all of our deploys. So like w without that, there was absolutely no way that we could have used Podman, it it just would not suit our needs. So so now we have an alternative, right? And having an alternative is never bad. We were talking about you know different problems that Docker's facing, and and you know what they're they're addressing it. Um, they're they're addressing the way that uh, their revenue model works, and they're addressing different things in their own ecosystem. Honestly, I have no complaint against Docker right now. It's working just fine for me. Uh, Certbot obviously is another. Uh, <laughs> It's another can of worms there, but <laughs> but Docker for the most part has has been fine, and uh, I am just you know in in the spirit of open source, making sure to highlight the alternatives that are available to us. Definitely. What do we have next up on uh, news? Oh, I think I saw it. Uh, yeah. Locals, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Am I correct in saying that? Okay. 
Yeah, so so next up is going to be our little discussion on Locals.com slash a rant. I hope it doesn't turn into a rant, but we'll see. I'll cut you off. <laughs> so Locals.com has been our go-to for community uh, and just kind of setting something up. Obviously, we didn't want uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, nothing like that, where you know we, we may choose in the future to maintain a presence there. We definitely didn't want that to be part of our main community. Uh, now... In true self-hosted fashion, I mean, I I think we would prefer to have our own like forum instance or, or whatnot, but it doesn't hurt to be part of a network, right? So I think what we've done is we've we've landed on Reddit uh, as kind of the the network that we are going to join and be a part of and and kind of maintain our community there uh, and and foster it in the Reddit ecosystem for the time being. I'm I'm okay with that. Uh, however, we had a go at locals.com, uh, as well. And that was set up a year ago or, or so as an alternative to Facebook or it's, it was almost like a Twitter plus Patreon. Uh, so it, it offered uh, a lot of different subscription services and a lot of things that were meant to boost content creators while fostering a network, uh, of, of an audience that was shared between content creators. Um, now, I don't know what everyone else's experience on that was like, uh, but the more I found out about it, the more unfavorable it seemed. Uh, honestly, the, the, the interface, the creator interface was terrible. Uh, halfway through our use of it, they discontinued uploads that were audio files longer than 30 minutes. Uh, so we couldn't post any of our podcasts there. Uh, and they started gatekeeping more and more content, not only like by default, but they mandated that that content uh, was behind uh, paywalls, which is not something I I like. I mean, there's the old adage we were talking about previously. I mean, uh, information wants to be free, uh, but information also wants to be valuable, right? And like I said previously, it's going to be the people who are Curating? Curating, yes. The people who are curating that information, that's going to be where the value is given to other people. And when value is given, value should be received. So like if, if you're talking about a classical example of, of a exchange of value, you know, money for other value, that would be, that, that curation would be part of it, right? That paywall concept has never sat well with me though, because information does want to be free. Obviously, there's a big problem with that, and, and locals for you know for everything that they did did try to solve it. Do I think they did a good good job? I mean, they 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 tried. They they implemented what they thought was going to be a winning strategy. Um, I uh, tended to disagree, but wanted to give them a fair shot. Um, I did, however, get an email recently from them as an administrator of, of one of the the projects. I was going to say, can you explain why you know you went into the paywall? But can you explain why? why we're getting away from locals and kind of the reason for the, the reason for the rant. <laughs> yeah. So, so locals, it, it sent out an update. It was just an email update. They were like, uh, happy 2021, you know, looking forward to a great year with y'all, by the way, we're going to make communities paid now. And uh, if you haven't checked out our new feature, you know, we, we set up a blog post for y'all. And, and I'm like, wait, wait a second. What was that middle thing? Uh, and, and literally they buried it in just a whole slew of, of good news, which is a deceitful tactic in itself. I don't like that period. Right. I, I, no. I just, that's not cool. Right. So that, that was a, an immediate red flag for me. Uh, and. And so I, I went searching around the web and it took me a solid 10 minutes in just searching inside of locals to find out what they were talking about. And I found their uh, support article on subscription communities. And the third paragraph down here says, starting January 25th, all new communities on locals will be paid communities. Any free communities started before January 25th will be converted to a paid community. A non-free community requires its members to subscribe in order to view all content, make any posts, view and make comments or replies, participate in chats, and access the content library. 
Um, obviously, this is antithetical to what we are trying to cultivate, which is an open community where anyone can come and go based on a network, you know, ecosystem that someone is already in. And that would be the, the locals.com ecosystem turned out to be not the case at all. Uh, so right. we're, we're, we're not cultivating a free open discussion forum on locals. <laughs> yeah. This is. This is a gated community paid subscription only service. I mean, they may as well have been starting their own newspaper service. This this business model is so antiquated. <laughs> I am shocked. I am shocked. I just I I don't see it being a sustainable business model. I, and and I'm not in any communities that Use locals, really. And, and that was part of, part of my frustration about it, too. The discoverability access is just not there. The other community that uh, I had subscribed to, not even subscribed, just, you know, been a free joined. member yeah. of joined. Yeah. Uh, that other community is, well, let me put it this way. I don't know what I was looking for, but that community wasn't it. Um, now, the frustrating part of that is that the community I'm talking about uh, was the community started by Brian Lunduke. Uh, for, for those who don't know their Linux lore, Brian Lunduke is the one who started Linux Action News, or the Linux Action Show, excuse me, uh, back in the day. Uh, and that was the biggest, longest running Linux show, podcast, YouTube channel for ever. Like it was, it was, it was huge, right? Uh, him and his co-host Chris ran that thing for years. Uh, and, and Chris is actually still at Jupiter Broadcasting and has a multitude of shows. It's a great ecosystem there. Like there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm in fact, uh, on Matrix, uh, in their chat rooms, uh, every day. And, and it's, it's a thriving community and they have really good stuff going on. I'm, I'm just really happy to be, to be in that ecosystem. Uh, Brian had split off from them several years ago, maybe even a decade ago now. I'm not sure to go and do his own thing, which is which is fine. Um, he fine. he wanted sure. to, yeah. Uh, and actually, one of his complaints it was funny is that they were producing a, a show about open source Linux action show, uh, and Chris oh, with a paywall. Well, no, Chris was actually adamant about using a Mac to record and do all of his oh, okay. uh, audio sure. processing. Uh, that's not the case now from what I hear in from their shows. Uh, but, you know, that was one of Brian's complaints uh, at the end of the day. So, so Brian is someone who cares really, really about computing in general, he'll, he'll tell you. But he does also really care about open source. He, he is maybe first and foremost, but he is definitely built his reputation on open source and it's something he is at least passionate about. I've heard him talking about it plenty of times. Now, after this announcement, my podcast reader started failing to get one of the RSS feeds that I was subscribed to. Mm. So like after a day of getting notifications about that, I finally got ticked off enough to, to go figure out what the issue was. Usually if it's like our domain or someone else's, they'll resolve it within a day, right? But this thing kept going and going and going. And I looked up and it was lunduke.com and he has, uh, he has a subdomain vault.lunduke.com where he keeps all of his feeds. And that was failing to, to pick up the RSS feed that was located at that location. So I was like, okay, what's, what's going on? Um, you know, and, and, Going to lunduke.com, if you look at the Internet Archive, uh, it is a site that is raw HTML. There was no JavaScript. Uh, it is a site that did not even have an SSL certificate. It was plain HTTP because wow. Brian said he, he <laughs> just right. did not believe in encrypting everything. He had a, he had a whole rant about it. Anyways, so this dude goes from a raw HTML site that is unencrypted and has like, it's statically generated, like, like Jekyll. I think he used Hugo for it. Uh, so he goes from that to implementing a domain redirect from lunduke.com straight to lunduke.locals.com. Well, that's not very cool. No, no. Now he's not, (laughs) 
He's not he's not <laughs> adhering to any of the principles he's espoused. He is not making his content available. I haven't I haven't been able to find his, his RSS feed for his own podcast or, or literally any other thing that he produces other than on locals.com. Uh, on top of everything, locals.com isn't even open source. Right, which is why I'm okay leaving it because it it really doesn't hold to the values that we espouse. Right, right. but I I see him going over to this platform, distributing all his material solely on this platform, and it isn't even open source. You look you look at the bottom. I mean, it it has uh, Google Play and uh, iPhone apps available that are closed source. Right. It's software. It's, it's server backend is closed source. There is nothing open sourcey about this community. I'll, I'll still see some of his content posted over on Odyssey, but it's a lot of his, his promos. Uh, Odyssey being a federated system. We'll talk about that in a second here, but I, I, I I'm dumbfounded as to the reasons and, and he hasn't put out any content outside of locals.com to back up any any of these moves that he he's making i i am just i'm i'm flabbergasted i'm frustrated and because i i really like the content that he put out he puts out the linux sucks video every every single year and it's very entertaining and it, it cuts to the quick and it's it's revealing about what's really going on in the industry and i'm not going to get that now because of what because of his little temper tantrum yeah the paywall this this yeah this this paywall that he decided to put his content behind this is this is a bad move this is a bad move for him and and i am i am going to readily ditch this platform and move to something uh more open and actually there may be even more open things in the works but for the time being i'm okay sticking with reddit it's where i feel most at home on the internet uh and and i'm i'm just gonna leave it at that okay Definitely. I have two things, two quick things here. I'm yeah. telling you, yeah. we talked about it a little bit, but discovery is everything mm. anymore. Discovery is everything. Let's get in some later news. <laughs> so I saw you had it linked here. Mm -hmm. Nextcloud released an app for a self-hosted podcast manager. I'm not even sure if it's Nextcloud, the, the organization. I don't think so. I think it's just some independent developer is what it looks like. The other thing I looked at when I was reading this article is that it's not fully implemented. Some of the features, I think it was more of a, hey, this is out there. I wrote a media player a while back for Nextcloud. Um, I'm going to check out right now and see if, you know, RSS is, er, er, sorry, podcasts is something, you know, people would be interested in. So I think he said some of the pictures were mock-ups, but definitely something to keep your eye on. I'll say, though, that... Nextcloud anymore, there's an app for everything on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There is quite literally an app for anything. I saw it the other day because I was looking through, but Nextcloud has a matrix, a full blown like element matrix platform that you can do full blown chat. You don't need the element app, the standalone element app in. You could basically just use Next. I don't know if it's integrated with Nextcloud Talk or what, but essentially you can run your life pretty much from a Nextcloud instance anymore. Basically. Basically, I'm very happy to see all this. Obviously, oh yeah, it's just you know, it's it gets a little overwhelming when you're like, well, I can do what now? <laughs> what do I add next? What do I add next? Right? Yeah. yeah. So I saw that out there. It was a uh, radio app. Was his app before? And then we had uh, one more piece of news. Mm, yeah. Ah, uh, PeerTube. PeerTube three. Yeah. So so coming back to what we were talking about, Federation PeerTube version three point oh was just released on January seventh. Yeah, do you want to give the uh, name with uh, version three? What? It's a live. Oh. It's a live. Oh no! <laughs> you didn't like it? I thought I thought it was funny. <laughs> well, and that was their big selling point for version three. It's like now we have live streaming. So for those of you yeah. who don't know, PeerTube is a federated uh, YouTube self-hostable replacement. There's a couple things that it has going on uh the first obviously it's it's a self-hosted youtube so you can put videos up there people can watch those videos by going to your website great awesome uh the second part of it is is that 
it federates with other PeerTube instances. So much like Nextcloud can federate and you can share files between Nextcloud servers, PeerTube can federate with other PeerTube instances and it can share videos with other PeerTube servers. Uh, this is this is really great. Obviously, this is how the internet works as a federated system. Same thing, just on a different level. PeerTube is, is implementing that same kind of architecture. PeerTube does it with the activity pub protocol, uh, which yeah. is a standard that's being developed by the W3C, which is a protocol designed for federation uh, on the IP space. So anything that needs to be federated and, and serve content between servers and subsequently to clients can be done using activity pub as the, the protocol to do it handles everything from uh, users to content to whatever you would would need uh, and it does all of that through their standardized uh, interface so peertube is is one of the things that implements this uh, mastodon is another thing that implements this which is a twitter like clone there are other things like link aggregators like reddit so there's a lot to be said about federation well, okay. I'm not going to get into the, the benefits of federation. Um, I, I'm, I'm just here to say it's, it's very interesting that right now when people are getting deplatformed from live streaming platforms and, and video hosting platforms and, and sharing platforms, that something comes along that is an alternative to a centralized service like locals that can provide you that same type of functionality on what may end up being a more ethical basis. So this is definitely something to watch. And and also, I, I wanted to put this out there that if, if people are interested in running PeerTube instances but don't have the technical know-how to set them up or maintain them, this is actually a really good candidate for adding to our service collection. This is something that we can we can consider adding to the list of services that we're able to provide. So if, if, if someone's really burning to have us of uh, host this for them, uh, let us know in the, in the contact form on the website, um, send us, send us an email through that or, or hop on our subreddit, reddit.com slash rcompose and let us know, let us know that there's interest in this. And that can be something that we can take into consideration. I, I'm definitely all for it. I think our, our priorities actually, as we're going to jump into next, uh, don't exactly have that spelled out, but that is something that we can take into consideration. And then talking about our priorities, Jack and I actually just met and, uh, we, we were talking about what we wanted to do and, and, and in which direction we wanted to take our compose. Our compose being first and foremost, a business that we want to make sure is maintainable and sustainable. Uh, we wanted to, to make sure that we, we set our goals appropriately and, and, uh, we're able to move, move towards them. So we, we came out with, with three goalposts. I think these three categories are what we want to put our time and energy into for for Q1 2021. So Jack, if you want to run through these, we can we can kind of summarize what we went over uh when when you were over here. So I'll list off the three here. So yeah. uh additional content, user interaction, and resiliency. Sure. Do you want to dive into them a little bit? One of the major things that we wanted to do in Q1 2021 was to put out more content. Uh, we wanted to put out quality content. We wanted to put out content that people can consume, uh, depending on how they they prefer to consume content. Obviously, the podcast is important to us because we both like the the medium and we think right. it's the best way to get our message across. And you know, the the way we communicate and getting both of ourselves on the same page, this is a great way to do that because we can edit out <laughs> the places that we're not sure. on the same page about. <laughs> so, so the podcast is huge to us and it's getting sliced and diced up in the sense that we're, we're going to put out the, the podcast, but we wanted to take some of the things that we went over on the podcast and really drill down into them. For instance, we have all of our integration discussions, which goes over one of the services that we offer. That's one part of the segment of the podcast that I think 
can get overlooked if if we don't highlight it right so and and obviously that's something i think that's really important to us and and the conversation that we have going back and forth really does clarify a lot of different things for us and it brings out uh, usually usually we're able to settle on some some kind of understanding or 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 at least some some major takeaway right but for, for the people who don't have the time to listen to the entire podcast or, or just are not inclined to listen to the entire podcast in order to get that takeaway, we wanted to be able to present that to them in other formats uh, and, and to give our message other mediums to, to, to get that across to people. So, so we've, we've chosen two other things and, and, I'm not saying this is all derivative, but it's all kind of flowing along the same path that, that we're, we're going down for our media creation, right? We, we kind of have our services and, and right now is kind of like the, the time of can board. So we're focusing on that. And, and a lot of what we're going to be producing is going to be talking, talking about can board. It's related to can board, right? Exactly. So one of the other pieces of media that we're going to produce is going to be uh, something like a whiteboarding session or maybe a screencast or screen sharing session, right? This is going to be something where I sit down and I go over the tech of the week and then I'm going to just kind of walk through a, maybe like a two and a half minute. All right, this is how you implement what we talked about. And uh, based on everything we talked about, you're going to want to do it this way. So this is how to do it that way. And just a little, a little key takeaway, right? In, in a two and a half minute, uh, audio visual clip, uh, and, and something that's, that's easy to take away. Um, I would love to get into infographics sometime. Uh, I just, I just don't think that's anything that I am artistic enough to handle at this point in time. <laughs> they're hard. I'll tell you that. It's a lot of time. They're, they're really <laughs> they're, hard. They're cool. They, they end up cool, but if they're done right, they end up pretty sweet. But man, it takes quite a bit of time to get up and running. Probably, I'm sure there's a steep learning curve for that. It does. It does. So, so we're as neither of us are skilled in in graphic design, graphic yeah. design <laughs> whatsoever. We're gonna put that on the back burner. Uh, but we we did want to have one other way to to get this information out and and that's obviously going to be the classical written word uh so so jack's taken on the the task going forward here uh, to start writing up a a portion of our podcast segment as as a smaller blog post article so if if it's something you want to share right and 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 you don't want to share a link to a podcast or or, or audio or, or or a clip of me talking about you know whatever then a a nicely formatted blog post is going to be right up your alley and and jack's going to be the one to to provide that and and to go over the features why you might want this from our compose and how we can help you get there right so i think i think expanding that kind of media is is going to help us help you <laughs> as as corny as that sounds i mean we we want to be a value to the community here we don't want to just be shilling something whether it's our stuff whether it's someone else's stuff i i, I want to be able to put some weight behind what we're saying and and reason out why what we're doing here is is going to be beneficial and implementing you know our our advice, how, how this actually works in the real world. With that said, that's not the only thing that we're going to do, though. Obviously, there is ongoing maintenance and, and other things that we need to touch on, too. And to dive into the resiliency piece of it, uh, we want to make sure that the service that we provide, you know, it lives up to its reputation. We want to make something that is anti-fragile, right? We want to make something that is is resilient. And the, the way to do that is to architect it like that. If we can, if we can start thinking about, you know, what does resiliency look like? Does this look like more notifications? Does this look like a sustainable business model? We have, we have a lot of things that could fit under that. I, I think for the most part, that is going to be technical. It's going to be, Hey, I want to make sure I'm uh, alerted if something fails or right. even better yet, can we get it to fix itself when it fails? We want stuff to be resilient. Like we've been going over outages are inescapable it's gonna happen to everybody a sustained outage is not that's absolutely something that you can you can engineer for and make sure that you have the 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 proper response in place when that time comes the big focus is that additional content but that resiliency is right up there i think we have a lot of stuff that we kind of had out there for resiliency 
that we never put in to begin with. So we're just kind of going back and tying up loose ends. Are you, Jack, are you, are you saying that that's tech debt? I wouldn't go that far. Okay. How about unimplemented features? Um, so vaporware. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> A lot of what we are going to be implementing is stuff we're, we've been talking about, you know, just just ways to make sure that stuff can fix itself. This isn't new. This is something that we've had in the works, but we've been focusing on some of the more shinier things. And it sure. turns out we're going to have to get back to basics and, and we just want to be able to provide a service that's that's rock stable. And this is the way to do that. And then... Jack also wanted to work on some user interaction pieces here. Honestly, what I would say is drop a like, rate, comment, subscribe to this video, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, um, the user interaction uh, Andrew was talking about was within our own services, whether that's podcast downloads for us or page hits or logins with each service it's basically tracking how people use our products and essentially measuring who's using what and then providing that to you saying hey it looks like you had x number of users this month sign into your next cloud instance what's what's the benefit i mean the benefit is look you want to know how stuff's getting used yeah right right we want to know how stuff's getting used we want to know if if we can drop something because that that lessens our overhead that means that we can focus on what you're actually using, right? If if you're using a service or you're using a functionality, right? We're here to make that better, but we can't if we don't know what you're using, right? right. And you you can't if you don't know what you're using, right? And and this goes to to a lot of different things. For for instance, one of the things we want to bake in a portal is we want you to be able to see what your usage looks like. What what applications are you using? How are you using them? You know, how do you how do you track your user interaction with the tools that you're using, right? How do you make sure that you're using your tools optimally? Like not everything is a nail, so why use a hammer for it? Right? For every single thing, right? <laughs> Love the analogy. As as we've spelled these three things out, right? If if something comes to mind, um, feel free to drop us a note on Reddit. I think we do have a good grasp on where we want to go from here, uh, and we are going to you know up up a lot of the stuff that we're we're producing, and we'll at least let you know on the podcast when stuff's coming out, what's coming out, how it's going, um, because this is this is where we touch base with each other too. Uh, we yeah. want to we want to make sure that we. We're moving forward in a a sustainable but also a beneficial way. I'm a, I'm really excited for this week's integration discussion. Come on, it's plugins. Who? How could you not get excited over plugins? Uh, <laughs> I just can't wait for Nextcloud plugins. Who's gonna do that one? Oh, it's like a, no that list has got to be a mile long. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's like <laughs> KeePass has a plugin. Everyone and their mother probably has a plugin. Oh man, <laughs> just wait! But, just wait till you can start writing plugins in WebAssembly. Oh, gross! Then you could. Oh no, dude! You could start writing plugins in Python. Ah, uh, you know what? I guess you're right. I guess you're very right? right on that. That sounds sweet, but at the same time, does that mean I have to compile Python into WebAssembly into JavaScript? So what uh, <laughs> what's that going to? <laughs> uh, I am I am proud to say I do not know. So. <laughs> I am not a web developer, nor do I play one on TV. <laughs> we'll just leave that as an unknown for right now. But I do want to jump into Canboard plugins. Honestly, there are quite a bit out there. Mm. Honestly, I was going through the list on Canboard site, and they just have this very vanilla like text search javascript thing basically filtering it's not fancy search at all it's just basically filtering by keyword but i put together a list of what's out there i kind of broke it down into four categories and i kind of just want to walk through what we've got out there my favorite is what <laughs> What Canboard puts on their website for yeah. the plugins page? Yeah, <laughs> I had to put it. I had to put it up. 
on the doc on our documentation it's uh <laughs> there is no approval process and code review mm -hmm. this is up to you to validate compatibility with these plugins <laughs> with your canboard instance <laughs> uh, that one made me laugh so hard because like all right so you're just saying i can run this thing on my canboard instance well, what does it do? <laughs> well, like I said, this is why I like PHP, man. I can just like copy stuff into a directory and it starts working. <laughs> I want to get into how you developed your mm. plugin. So just for everyone's awareness, Andrew did write a plugin. I tried to find it. It's not out on the site. It's at a 0 0.01 version, but we'll get into that a little bit later. I just want to go over some main uh, plugins here. We're a podcast, so what's the best way to explain this? Pictures and video, charts, graphs, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's how we yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I guess the easiest way to get started is top right next to your name when you log into Camboard, you click the down arrow uh, near your avatar, and there's a plugins button. Where does it take you? Basically, you got two options. List your current plugins and add plugins. I break these cat uh, these plugins down into four categories, and without further ado, here they are: mm. functionality, webhooks and communications, one authentications, another, and themes. I felt like those four broke it down pretty well, uh, especially for you know Camboard being a web app. Um, I didn't feel like there was anything more or less going on, but you know, functionality, kind of breaking it into uh, what you can do, what more you can do with tasks and subtasks. Uh, one of the favorites I had out there was that you're able to assign uh, due dates to subtasks. So we have that one out there uh, that we use basically to make sure that subtasks are completed on time. The other functionality related plugin that we have that we really like is uh, the group assignment. So in Camboard, you're only able to assign one person to a task by default. Now, I don't know if there are plans to be able to assign a group. I don't know what the maintainer is going to say. I, I think it's a great feature. It's already a plugin. So basically what you can do is you can take your task and assign it to two people. You can assign it to more than one person at a time, which is helpful for, I guess again, the podcast. It's very easy for us to both sit down and say, all right, this is what we're going to do. And you know, it's assigned to both of us so we both know when we're both aware. I'd say those we use the most but the next major category I have is webhooks and communications. I'll tell you what, we don't use webhooks and communication. I was looking at integrating it with uh, GitLab. The overhead to get that set up is quite a bit for a payoff that is, hey, we manage all our tasks in Canboard anyway. When you're taking on these webhooks and the communication platforms, it's uh, it's a complete beast. They offer out of the box SMTP, you know, you can send emails out of the box with it. I'll, I'll list off the plugins they have here for, you know, integrating chat. So it's off the top of the list here. It's Matrix, HipChat, Rocket Chat, Telegram, Bitbucket, GitT, GitLab, GitHub, and Gogs. They, they actually, they, someone has implemented their own chat. Have you seen that? Like you can have an inside of a Canboard chat. Yeah. Oh, it's like, yeah, For it says, quote, for smaller teams. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> yeah, what they, maybe that. not I for have... hundreds of users or whatnot, but yeah, it, <laughs> there's legit like a built-in chat that you can use yeah. inside of Canboard. <laughs> and like you said, the very first thing you said, Matrix. Like, I didn't even know that's, yeah. that's new. Like, I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that yeah. was a thing. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah, I... I haven't looked at this plugin page in a while, and I swear it has ha it has to have grown. It totally has. They got a wiki? Oh, I want to try this wiki. Yeah, thing. yeah. Wiki. Okay, so I have wiki set up on my personal board, and I like it. It's a uh, part of, I think, the project configuration page. There's just like another <laughs> tab almost mm. for wiki. Mm -hmm. So it's cool. I, I'll tell you what. I haven't nearly filled it out. Sure. Just because that's your personal board. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, it's right. I right. I don't need to. Right. Uh, I have a pretty good idea of what's going on. But to document everything on a wiki, pretty nice to have. It's it's even nicer when you consider like there's there's a dearth of project management tools for Camboard. Camboard is pretty much a a bare bones Kanban system, and 
some something like that could really add a a whole nother level to it where it becomes a project management system with its own documentation and like we were talking about um we were talking about searching tasks after they're closed to reference comments or stuff like that right if, yeah if you yeah. have if you have some kind of procedure that that makes sure to archive all those things those things are now searchable and it does become like a a knowledge base it does have that 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 characteristic of being something that you can go back and refer to rather than it's like oh yeah i know someone did something once upon a time let me see if i can find it so i'll tell you what while we're on the topic there is i believe a plugin for full i think it's full text search i believe it's a search plugin I don't know if it indexes better or what it does, but there's a plugin out there that does, I, I want to call it better search. It said, this plugin is created for advanced full text search within all projects. The search will be performed in task title, task description, task comments, subtask title, and in attachments. Oh, that's awesome. That's okay. awesome. All right. So it's out there. It's out there. Yeah. Yeah. And like we said, Camboard is fairly stable. And by fairly stable, I mean it really doesn't change. Right. Almost at all. I, I've not seen any major part of its interface change since I've been using it. And something like this, you know, I see last touch, you know, 13 months ago. And in the open source world, you know, that may raise a couple of eyebrows, but it being simply for Camboard. That's going to work. That is absolutely going to work. It's probably in, you know, kind of a maintenance mode type thing. Unless Camboard comes out with some major, you know, plugin maintainer is going to have to look at that. But honestly, it's nothing's really changing. So that gets us into our third major category, which is authentication. So again, you have all kinds of providers out there for uh, authentication. Now, the one thing I didn't see was LDAP. Now I don't because I don't know if that comes built in by default. It's built in by default. Okay, okay. We, you know, group of two people, personal board. It's it's as easy as user management via the user management interface they provide. With the authentication plugins, you can basically just plug into a major provider. Yeah, let's see here. The major ones being so CAS is out there. And then you got GitHub, GitLab, uh, Google. You can authenticate with IMAP. And then what Andrew, I think, was trying to do at one point in time is reverse proxy. I was trying to do SAML authentication, actually. Okay. That was that was a migraine um, and a half. Like I said, we use regular Camboard user, man user and group management. It's two people. You do we don't need you know, crazy authentication measures to get in but they're they're out there the other thing i would note along with authentication is uh that i didn't mention is two-factor the canboard documentation said there's a way to set up two-factor i think just out of the box so i don't know if that's built in or it's a plugin but either way it's out there that's canboard i mean it's it, it provides a whole bunch of interfaces i mean at the end of the day Shoot, it's a it's a board that is a front end for a database, which is why it's just been so easy to to use and develop against and test. And it's I, I, honestly, it's it's very simple, and straightforward to work with. I I I love that. I love that about it. Definitely, you know, for for every all you CSS junkies out there like Andrew, how could we not skip themes? Themes. So I need more pictures on the documentation. Camboard out of the box comes in a light theme. It's, I'm sorry, it's not great. <laughs> no. I, it's terrible. No, it's not. <laughs> I was looking, so I was going through their documentation and it had been, you know, actually quite a bit of time. And I was looking, I was like, ew, that, is, that board is disgusting. But lucky for us, there are plugins out there that have been written for dark theme. There's a moon theme. There's an essential theme. And there's a, cu a full on customizer. So if you really want to get after it with your CSS, you can do so. But the one we use is Nebula and it's a dark theme. And I'll tell you what, it's it's perfect. On my personal board, I use the customizer plugin, 
with that, basically I'm able to add a random background. I think it goes to upsplash dot com random picture and just pulls a random one so some days it's something good some days it's not but why do you like doing that that's like the second time you've done that <laughs> i like it <laughs> just a random picture Man. at like 4k quality it takes like a minute for the page to load but hey it's there <laughs> can't go wrong with it so i was looking up on my personal it- blog Something yeah. way out of the past, way out Uh-oh. of the past. Yeah. Back in uh, back in 2017, I have a post here, and I have a screenshot here of my custom CSS that I implemented on top of Camboard because I am that cool. You're that's gonna be you're gonna have to share that because I am that cool. Uh, it's dark mode. It is actually the exact same background as is currently on my blog right now. Yeah. You're going to have to post that. You're going to have to... Yeah. S- do you have a screenshot of it? Uh, I do, yeah. I actually probably have the source code still somewhere. but <laughs> Hanging around. Yeah, I definitely I definitely have a screenshot of it. All right. How about that? Custom CSS. I, I, I knew you were a CSS junkie out there. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> right, no, your CSS no, no. code over there. <laughs> so those are the major four uh, categories, I'd call it, out there. Mm-hmm. But... You've written one. I've or written two? one and worked on several. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, do you want to kind of describe what it's like writing one? So, one thing I am not is a developer. And I know this because <laughs> I don't develop. I I throw things into production instances and tweak them as I go along. <laughs> For instance, uh, earlier today, Jack, when I was talking to you about Rails code, <laughs> I literally went into your program and just started changing code on the development server. Sure, yeah. Uh, in order to get the notification to work. And I'm just in there, like like I installed Vim on the server. I know it's a cardinal sin, but whatever. Yeah, okay, hey, whatever, right? <laughs> and and I'm on there and, and just changing your code willy-nilly trying to get these notifications to work. And sure enough, I do, as long as I reload the page enough time. <laughs> <laughs> it's much like that because it is written all in PHP and plugins are in PHP. There is a pretty straightforward plugin architecture to follow as far as directory wise goes, you know, model view controllers. Like if, if you understand that and, and really I hate writing stuff from scratch. It is just the worst. So the first thing <laughs> I did uh, in in order to implement something is I took something that was already implemented and copied it uh, and renamed it. <laughs> so now I had the same thing. It, it was doing the same thing, but under a different name. And I'm like, all right, that's great. So I, I can at least rename it. And then I went everywhere in the code where it had that name and renamed every all of those instances. So, so I, <laughs> I renamed everything and it all worked. And I was like, all right, great. Um, and, and keep in mind, I'm doing this all on a live production server and just like refreshing the web page in my browser to make sure it works. Once again, this is why I'm not a developer. So as I'm going through, uh, there's, there's a couple things I had to touch. There was, uh, there was a couple controllers, uh, that I had to do to get the right information. And then once I got that, there was a lot of JavaScript and, and a lot of the logic lived in the JavaScript. Uh, that got sent to the browser in order for it to, to, to process it and, and return a, a value on it. So, so one of the things I, I did was create an analytics tab, uh, that tracked the complexity metric that Jack and I use. So we set a complexity metric on, on all of our tasks, uh, and I simply added them all up at one week intervals and display the total in a graph format. So, so the first thing I did was, was to grab a plugin that displayed something like that. I think it was time tracking in that graph like format. Uh, and then I had to go in and, and change the source. And really it's just a, a whole bunch of trial and error in JavaScript to, to get this thing working. And there's a lot of hard coded defaults in there that I don't like. Like for, for one, uh, the last column has to be named done in order for this plugin to work, right? It doesn't take the last column okay. in whatever board okay. you're on. It takes the column that's named done. Done. <laughs> this is why I'm not a developer. 
after I get that done, um, and and I go through through that, I I have what is in essence just a a working plugin, and all I do on any instance that I need it is copy that folder because it is a folder that is actually on one of our volumes. Let's copy that folder over to to any old server and refresh a web page, and and that's now suddenly available to us. Since complexity is something that's implemented in the base cam board project you know it doesn't need a a separate plugin to have complexity it's just there ready and available to us so i've copied that over into several instances to test out other things but uh that's that's literally all it takes uh, the other thing that i've been tinkering around with is the calendar type plugin so it displays yeah. the tasks on a built-in calendar uh in canboard now canboard does have the ability so you can subscribe to iCal feeds and and get like the calendar on your phone if you will the yeah. same that you can do with nextcloud but this is a built-in one in camboard and it's nice and what i wanted to implement is a drag and drop where you could actually drag a task from one day to the other if you wanted to change its due date um and and, and do that uh, maybe even expand them as well i was working on it a couple nights ago just because i was i wanted to get back into that that's been one on my to-do list for a couple months now honestly uh and actually so uh frederick uh, the author and maintainer of canboard uh, has since marked that as not actively developed anymore so uh, if i wanted to get something in there i would have to implement it myself and then publish it myself uh, which i could to this this list here so there is a, a process to do that that's not something i have gone through yet um but Doing that with a plugin that's already established there is going to be a lot easier than doing that with my hacked together oh. <laughs> complexity <laughs> analytics measurement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's awesome, though. So I plan to do that first. Uh, and and honestly, of all the projects, of all the projects that we use, I think I'd be most comfortable with this one, not only because I use it the most, uh, but because it is just also so stable and, and really doesn't change that often. So, uh, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with it and, and just implementing those stuff that I would really like to see for myself. So is that calendar plugin, is it on the list? Is it, is it available or is it just not actively developed? It's available. One of the things it's just not maintained essentially. It has been marked as not installable by the plugin button on an individual Kboard instance. But, and, and, and this is another thing about plugins. I don't know if you're planning on touching about this, but like installation functionality. So there is the, the plugin method where you could actually just like go into your instance and search what plugins are available. Some are not available via that method. Sure. Right. They have to be added to the directory. Correct. You have to go in and actually add them. No, I'm glad you brought that up because I know for us, at least, when we were setting up Camboard initially, uh, and I wanted to get GitLab webhooks in, because we're running Camboard as a Docker instance, we didn't have the plugins folder passed. As a volume, yeah. Yeah, right, passed as a volume to the container. I was unable to install everything. I mean, since now we have that fixed, but yeah. I just remember having a heck of a time with any kind of plugins. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm going actually right to the, the plugin calendar source on GitHub here, but it's it's really straightforward. So you, you do have the choice between the three methods, right? So there's, there's installing the plugin from the Canboard plugin manager in one click. There's also downloading the zip file, the release that they he, he used to produce and decompressing everything under the plugins directory. And then cloning that repository using like git clone into that same folder. So eventually it's going to end up in that same location, right? So it's, it is three ways to install it, but there's also like really only one. You just got to get all the files into that location. Um, how you keep it updated, that is a little bit different. That's why I think the git method is probably going to be best. Yep. Yeah. Either, either that or the, the cam boards built in plugin manager. Cause that'll, that'll auto update it update. for yeah. you. Yeah. The, the other thing is that it needs to be named according to the actual plugin, like the, the plugin hierarchy. Like I, I said, the first thing I did was rename it. Um, after I, I, I copied the old plugin after I was working on my complexity one. And I did that because you can't have this 
the plugin show up unless the name matches everything else. It's just the logic that Camboard implements. So um, when you do make that clone, you have to clone it down to a specific directory name, and then you have to own the files to make sure that the web server can serve those files correctly. Do you have anything else to add? Any comments? I think you're going to have to put up a picture of the... Uh... The CSS? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I don't know. But yeah, I was like, I was like, I did CSS on that. I remember that. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. It looked pretty too. Like it really looked pretty. There are a million plugins out there. Mm-hmm. That's my closing remark. There aren't a million. I'll tell you what, Nextcloud probably has more. But for what you're doing with Canboard, the plugins that are provided and that are out there, you're pretty much filling up every every kind of need or gap that the original application has, if you want to call it is kind of being filled with a plugin. It, I imagine if you want it, it's out there. And not only that, but if you don't find one, right? It, that's the well there's 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 two options at that point. There's the write your own plugin option, which is the one I opt for in in a couple scenarios. Then there's the also well, we provide runners option. In that if you're looking for a GitHub integration or GitLab integration that's not necessarily as hard to set up or really as intense as something like this, maybe maybe having a single script run against it periodically is going to take care of exactly what you need to do. If you just need a little cleanup here and there or if, or if you just want to tweak something, once again, Camboard has a very nice API. Like I said, their internal structure is very clean. It's very solid. And, and that's something that can be set up and maintained fairly easily. Uh, it's something that, that we do as well. Uh, so if, if you don't see what you're looking for in these plugins or, or if you have, you have your ideal scenario in mind and you just can't seem to get it there, let us know and we'll see if that's something we can help out with. I mean, that's, I'd say that's what we're here for. We're here to help you guys get set up. So I think with that, I'm excited for our uh, grab bag today. Preface. We are not meatheads. <laughs> yeah, this isn't this isn't a discussion about you know being a meathead. Going off last episode, I wouldn't even put myself that far out of the advanced beginner stage of working out. Honestly. <laughs> okay, okay. I've I've got a lot of hard learned lessons under my belt. Uh, but it took me a long while to get here. And I, I still have so much to learn, right? Uh, and, and really, all I want to do today is, is share my experiences. Maybe maybe someone learns from my mistakes or, or, or hears something that they didn't think about before. Like, I'm, I'm here to take you on the journey that, that I've been down. I'm not here to preach. I'm not here to say, you know, you have to do all this stuff or, or prescribe anything. That is that is. Exactly the last thing I want to do. <laughs> and and it was funny too, right? After after I, I made up my mind that this is what I was going to talk about, I was trolling through none other than the very Reddit that I keep talking about. And there was a study that had just come out by some Canadian national agency about how people uh, are over-consuming alcohol and leading overly sedentary lives. And I'm like, duh, <laughs> that's that's what's been forced on our throats, right? That's how people would naturally react under under what's been going on. And I'm like, all right, the one thing I can do, I I, I can't change people's behavior, but man, I can teach them, right? I, I I can't I can't make them drink, but I can I can show them where the oases are, oases, oh, whatever. I can show them where the water is. All right, <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> to take you down what, what I've gone through, actually, some I don't have in the show notes, but I guess I'll give you a little bit of the the backstory to what little Andrew grew up with, you know, working out. Um, newsflash, he, he didn't, actually. And I came into high school when would be the typical time for, for someone to start working out. And, and I really didn't actually in, in my head, I, I kind of had the picture of, you know, why are these guys going to the gym if they're not jocks? Like only jocks work out, right? Like regular people don't work out. It's, it's like only, why would anyone, if they're not an athlete work out? And that stuck with me for, for a long time. It, it, it stuck with me for a really long time. Um, a little bit later in my high school career. 
I took up cross country because I was like, uh, I was talking with my parents. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm kind of chunky. <laughs> <laughs> I forget the actual conversation I had, but I was like, oh, you know, I'd like to, you know, lose a little weight. And it's kind of the time, you know, girls started getting a little cuter. I started to think about, you know, weight and stuff like that. Cool. And I was like, man, I'd, I'd like to not be, you know, like that. So they're like, well, okay, you could start running, I guess. So I was like, all okay. right, all right, I can, I, I guess I can do that. You know, and, and I started running around the block and then it was two blocks and, you know, just, just kind of doing that to, I, I didn't have a baseline. I didn't, I didn't know what exercise was. I mean, I was, I was in peewee soccer, but that was a little kid running around the field, falling over and knocking into sure. other people. That wasn't, that wasn't exercise. Like, so I was trying to find what worked. And after that, the, the next progression was cross country. So, so I took that up and that was a rude awakening because i went from running several blocks to running several miles and that is a big difference now it didn't help that we had michael bradich who in division three in ohio was the state champion his his sophomore junior and senior year oh my god in cross country right Jeez. And I was like, how, how do you beat? How do you, what? <laughs> so I had no pressure to be good <laughs> because. Fair enough. Yeah. Be, because yeah. the rest of the team was good just by virtue of having to keep up with him and practice and, and at least challenge him somewhat. But I wasn't, you know, I'm still not, I would still wouldn't call myself skinny or fast, but. <laughs> I was I was able to keep up during distance runs and and did fine. I think the longest I ran during a training was ten miles. About a year and a half into it, uh, right after I believe it was right after the cross country season. I think it was um, the end of junior year. Um, my knee, my left knee, just was really really bothering me. Like I could I, I could I could walk around right. I could I could sit. I could do whatever. But as soon as I started putting impact stress on it, forget just- it. Forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Forget it. So I I didn't know what to do because, I mean, that's all the exercise I had ever known up till then. And and that was just I wouldn't say it's devastating, but it it hit. You know, I was frustrated. And of course, no one's going to be able to tell me what's wrong. I mean, you 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 look at a, you know, 17 year old. Oh, your knee hurts. Get over it. Right. I mean, that's. That's, that's, yeah, no one's, no one's going to be able to tell you anything good. So, uh, with the, the lack of really good diagnostics, right? I, I just kind of let it go by the wayside and really didn't do anything, uh, senior year after that. It wasn't really until I got into the job at the, uh, retail store at Harbor Freight that I started working out. And that was going to the, well, and it was, it was nice because it was second shift. So I could wake up at, you know, nine o'clock and, you know, 10 sure. o'clock or 11 o'clock and hit the gym and still be ready to work at, you know, two thirty. I joined a gym and had no clue what to do. I started off on, you know, one of the things in cross country that I never did was break 20 minutes for a 5k. Um, I think the closest I got was 20 minutes, 20 seconds. And it's oh, still, right there. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Right there. Right there. So that's the, and, and that was on a really fast track on a great day. And in my mind, I, I always knew I wanted to work back, back up to that. Obviously starting off on a treadmill at the gym is the first way to do that. I'd give myself two, three, maybe years off. Yeah. The issue wasn't as prevalent, but I could still feel it there. And and I didn't know what was going on. So then I started doing research on running and how runners train and what they do. And one thing that my coach had never told us to do in, in high school was to weight train. Right. He, he literally said, just keep running, just keep running, just keep running, which for a runner, like I get it. It makes sense. Right. But what happens when you do that is you lose your balance between your muscle groups. I mean, you, you don't have as much push and pull and you're overtraining some things and you're not training others. And it's, is really detrimental to your balance, you know? So, so trying to get that back, um, the, the first thing that came to mind and, and I don't know where I got it from, but was, was doing squats, right? So I want to do squats because that'll train the muscles that you're not using while you're running. 
So I started off with squats and then found uh, strong lifts, five by five, uh, which is a beginner's kind of thing. And, and it walks you through a linear progression uh, of basically Olympic lifts mixed with free weights. Uh, so I, I went on that for a little bit and kind of doing it on my own. And, and I found that that's beneficial for me and detrimental for me. I never really worked out with someone. I would have a spotter if I'm going to bench or, or something. Cause you, you never want to exercise un, unsafely. Like, because safety, safety is obviously a big thing. Not only is, is it, well, you can really hurt yourself if you're, well, you can, you can hurt yourself. You can hurt yourself if you like drop weight or, you know, be stupid <laughs> about it. But not only that, but you could also really hurt yourself if, if you have that moment of like panic. Right. And then you like, like panic rack something, but like in the middle of it, you just completely lose your form and you start pushing like with your shoulders or, you know, with your neck or something, you could end up really pulling something or, or, or doing something pretty bad. Sure. You're, you're gonna, you're gonna rack the weight, right? So it's not gonna fall in your head, but you're not gonna be able to lift for weeks afterwards because you pulled something doing the wrong form. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's another thing too that I've learned over over the years too is that that form matters a lot. Uh, and and actually, so at at the end of uh, that, right after I moved to Columbus, I was doing a, a, a very similar thing at OSU's facilities, and I ended up really tweaking my shoulder. I had just overtrained it for like a couple weeks, so I was I was terrible form, um, and and it just ended up. Just, just tweaking it, just like pulling something. And I'm not going to say it's ever been the same, right? But there are a couple of things that I've been able to do to, to rehab it. You know, one of the things that I've been very happy about is, is uh, starting to incorporate body weight into what I'm doing. And what, what that has done since, since up till that point, I think it's, it, it had been basically, uh, you know, start off with running, then started to do, uh, Olympic, lifts and free weights um i also did uh i had had a stint swimming so i did that at osu that was pretty fun yeah that's awesome i love oh yeah swimming's great yeah yeah ridiculously good um in addition to that though you know i was like i was like all right well i i really didn't have a good balance i mean i could i could push stuff i could pull stuff but i could do it with pretty bad form right and i was i was weak in all kind of other areas too one of the one of the cool things is body weight is like i'm moving my physical body around like the area of space right. that i occupy as a person right i can manipulate much better now and i'm like that there's there's a there's a sense of confidence to that you know you stand up a little bit straighter uh, so it's 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 absolutely raised my self-confidence and, and made me more comfortable in in who I am and you know how I how I carry myself how how I present myself sure during that same time I also started uh sprinting yeah that's okay. just not something you think about either it's like why would I sprint when I could run well there's very good reasons for that you ever take a look at long distance runners like professional and then take a look at like professional sprinters and wonder why of one of them it looks to be in much better shape than the other. Like just, just, just aesthetically, you know, which one looks better? Obviously someone, someone who's built for explosive power is going to have a leg up, no pun intended, in, in a sprint competition, right? But that's something you could also train for. It doesn't have to be mutually exclusive to anything else you're doing. It's actually really, really incredibly beneficial when it comes to running form because I have, I have started to get back into running, um, distance and walking. Uh, and I found that since I've started sprinting and specifically focusing on body weight, uh, for, for my core, right? So like my obliques, especially, you know, side abs and stuff like that, I've been a lot more able, able to maintain good form as, as I'm running. One of the things that I did wrong when I started to run, which I would caution a lot of people against because I see it everywhere is to not pick up my feet when I run, uh, shuffling along and, and not 
not engaging the rest of your body. If you engage from your, your knees down when you're running, you're losing everything else in your body. You're losing your core. You're losing your hips. You know, you're losing your glutes, your, your, your thighs, all of that. Knee injuries like the one I had, right? Can be caused by too much shuffling yeah is that what it is because you're putting like a huge amount of stress not only the downforce stress as you're you know hitting hitting the ground but like also your your foot is actively arresting your forward progress and you need to even exert even more force to get over that like i'm trying to run fast so i can run fast well into you know old age i don't want to i don't want to have you know, knee problems because I run, I, I run in order to not have health problems. Yeah. Right. 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 And really that's why I'm doing a lot of this stuff. I think you got a comment, but what are you doing now? I, I only ask cause I know you're not going mm-hmm. to the gym that I'm aware of, right, right now. So it's yeah. all body weight. Is that body weight and sprints outside? How are you going to continue that in the cold weather? I have been continuing it in the cold weather. All right. Um, okay. Actually, that's what I asked for for Christmas was cold weather workout gear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, no, I just, you throw on a sweatshirt. and I'll tell you what. So, I went for a run yesterday. I think it was like, I'll say decent weather. It was like 41. Yeah. And it was starting to get, it was just starting to get cold right as I came in. Like, you know, but it wasn't bad once I got started. I don't know if it's the same way with you. Like, it's like one of those things where it's like, once I get started, I'm fine. It's just getting out there. It's like this is not fun but i need this well so so for cold weather i always make sure to have gloves and uh, just know that your nose is going to snot up so know how to snot rock it uh yeah because <laughs> it's going to be painful if you don't uh but yeah cold cold weather you know body weight workout isn't isn't bad you know i'm i'm outside i think the one piece of equipment that i have to do that is a pull-up bar that's on the the door frame outside and that's, that's yeah, really all yeah. i need i've actually started the recommended routine uh, that r- the body weight fitness subreddit has. And that's been, that's been solid, right? Not only is it a good starting place, but it also provides a progression to get, to get better and better. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. You go from push ups to diamond push ups to clap push ups all the way up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been really fun. One of my goals is get to somewhere around 50% body fat. And I am not there right now. Uh, but, but one of the things that I'm going to try to implement is going to be a couple more, uh, running exercises. So uh, currently I'm, I'm doing basically one sprint day a week paired with a walking day. And you may say, wait a second. Did you just say a walking day? Yes. I said a walking day because yes, I do count that as exercise. If I'm going to be walking for an hour and a half anywhere, that's going to, that's going to be exercise. Yeah. Not only is it physical exercise, but it's also, you know, mentally refreshing for me as all of this is, right? I don't know. It's a way to decompress if, if I've ever said. Yeah, it's, it's you absolutely a, a way to decompress. I mean, it's a way to, one of the other things I like to do is, is take naps because I think that's a good way to kind of flush my system in the middle of the day. And I hate to come back to the zone, but you know, we were, we were talking about last week. How do you get it in the zone? And when I got LASIK, one of the things that I had relied on to kind of get in that headspace was, you know, taking off my glasses and I, I really couldn't see anything but like blobs and stuff. And uh, I was like, you know, am, am I going to be like super hyper aware and like all up in my head during this? And, and yeah. it is true that it takes a little bit longer for me to kind of to step into that frame of mind where I'm like, I'm working out right now. I need to be hyped. I've got to be hyped all through this workout. I'm just going to go work out and, yeah, and work out. That? Yeah. Uh, and, and it is, it is different. But I f- still find that I'm able to step into that zone while still having this, oh, man, I can still see everything. It's it's not – it hasn't impeded me as much as I was afraid it was going to. So very happy about that. It's something you mentioned I don't even think about, but I never work out with glasses on. I never run with glasses on. I never mm-hmm. exercise with glasses on. I always take them off. I'll leave them in the car. I, you know, just walk in. I can see, you know, everything's just – blurry basically Mm -hmm. i can see i'm fine seeing up close it's just everything in distance is you know everything past three feet i just you're like i don't care about you anymore (laughs) i don't know who i don't know who you are outside of three feet oh and i feel bad too because like i'm sure people were making eye contact with me during those times no idea i couldn't tell you (laughs) right just like i'm looking at a head right now (laughs) i think that's a person So yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. And it is nice for, for night running too, because I can see where I'm going a little bit more accurately, especially sure, yeah. because I tend to run on earth. 
Okay. What I say is, you okay. know, concrete was made for tires and earth was made for feet. So I'm going to run on earth. Um, and, and obviously that's, that's a reaction to what I've, what I've been through. But I, I find that it, it is not only more cushioning and, and easier on my joints, but it also forces me to, to grow those little stabilization muscles that I wouldn't otherwise. Like I can't get in a zone because I'm running right. over a very uneven surface and, and I really need to be aware. And, you know, sometimes I will, you know, step on some kind of a root or something and then I'll end up kind of running sideways for about two different steps to catch my balance again. Uh, and, and just, you know, going through all that, it's like, I am, I am really stressing out my body. And, and that's the crazy thing about bodies is, I mean, they are anti-fragile. You have to put stress on them in order for them to not, right. not just grow, but like sustain themselves. Like if, if they don't, if, if, if bodies don't get stressed, I mean, they wither away in the, you know, Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. And you're part of your body, whether you like it or not. So you better take care of that thing. Uh, and and I guess that's what I really wanted to, to say here is like, there's a lot of stuff that's going on right now. But one of the things that you have to take care of as an adult, part of adulting is taking care of your body. You know, and there's there's okay. a lot more to talk about. You know, there's there's, you know, uh mental health, you know, there is dietary health, uh there is dexterity health, like, you know, how do you how do you make sure that, you know, I'm typing all day? How do I not like get carpal tunnel? Seriously, right. Eye health, like uh I have now, thanks to once again Christmas gifts, uh, I have these uh, these blue blocker glasses uh, for when I'm working on the computer. That is something that I wanted to make sure to get, and that's that is one of the reasons that I I got LASIK is because I wanted to make sure that those were available to me for the rest of my life. One one of those things is is physical health, and and how 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 do you take care of that? What what do you do about that? So I wanted I wanted to make sure to touch on on this. One one of the things that's that's been fun too is is getting together with friends and and making it making an excuse to do stuff based on the the rationale that oh this is exercise. Like because I don't know, I don't know if extroverts are like this. They they probably are, but like in I have a tendency to make sure that everything happens for a reason that I'm doing something <laughs> that, you know, I could at least yeah. Justify to yeah. myself why I'm doing this. Like the reason I, the reason I, you know, sit and watch Avatar The Last Airbender with my roommate is because that's us spending, you know, time together and, you know, touching sure, base right. and, you know, making right. sure there's an avenue for discussion if one needs to happen. Right. So I make sure to, to have that time. And that's my excuse as to why I go watch TV. So, so one of the excuses that I use to, to go out and hang with my friends is like going, going and playing frisbee golf. Like that is a great way to spend two hours just walking through a forest. It ends up being a great time. Uh, and it's getting out and it's doing something and it's, it's, it's ultimately healthy. And I, if nothing else, really, really would like to cultivate healthy habits. And, and this is one of the ways Absolutely. I can, I can do that. Yeah. That's, I don't know. You need to, you need to take care of yourself. Honestly, part of it is it like, I sit at a desk all day. I can't sit mm. at that, you know, mm -hmm. I, I need that physical component. I think is what it boils down to. Well, I mean, I stand at a desk, but you know, you do you. It's the same, you know, it's the same thing. It's, <laughs> it's same coin, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It's sedentary. You're right. You stand there, sit, sit there, uh. you know, almost all day. It's like, all right, I need to stress my body a little bit and yep. get out. I was uh, watching yet another Thug Shell stream on Twitch. And one of the redeems that she has is a posture check. And I'm like, I'm like, I need, I need something in my life to like, like, Hey, by the way, <laughs> remind yeah. me of a posture check. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she also has a hydro homies. And I'm like, this girl's like really super into good habits. Like, <laughs> what is that? Like a water break? Yeah. Water break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take a, take a hydro homies break. Yeah. So there are many things. If I could go back and slap younger Andrew and say, you need to, pay attention and do, do this, this. Do this yeah 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 there, there's many things 
But one of one of the things is absolutely going to be, dude, look into, look into your physical health. And I- even putting it in those terms, I mean, obviously it, it doesn't make sense for me to say, hey, go to the weight room. Weight rooms, that way, that way, bro. You want to say, look, you're going to have a better time all around. So as, as one of, as one of the good habits, make sure, make sure you're, you're getting in some kind of exercise and, and I list plenty, plenty of stuff here. Maybe dancing is one I don't have here. I don't dance that often. I think that'd be cool to start dancing, but I'm not, I'm not going to start dancing by myself. That's weird. Right. Yeah. So, so I, I left that off the list, but there's, there's still plenty of, plenty of stuff here. Um, just pick one, just, just do it, do it. (laughs) Jack, are you are you kind of vocal at your about your your workouts at all? I got a buddy who does it, and I'll reach out to him occasionally, you know, on PRs mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I'll, mm-hmm. I'll kind of say, hey, by the way, you know, look what I've done, you know, check out this PR or whatever. But yeah, it is that sense of community that really is 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 helpful, right? Especially when you get down, when you when you start losing ground, or or when when, yeah. you, when you can't when you can't motivate yourself, right? It's it's good to have you know some someone else there watching your back, even though you totally. know maybe maybe I don't have a gym buddy, but I'll tell you what, I've always had people, I've always had people encouraging me and. And that I can that I can turn to and say, hey, you know, I haven't gone for a week, and they're like, dude, let's right now, let's yeah. let's, let's go yeah. right. As we're here to to continue to grow and and sustain our community, right? Go ahead and, and join us for you know if if you want to talk about working out, if you want to talk about open source technology and anything we covered today and and more, right? Go go to you know reddit.com slash rcompose, you know where we keep these conversations going after the episode's over. We keep you updated on all the latest developments. You you get you're, you're probably going to see what's coming up in in the next episode. That's where we we post the stuff that interests us, right? And and that we're doing right and and if you need someone to to watch your back we'll be there for you to foster that community and with that we hope you enjoyed this episode of our composed cast thank you be safe and we'll see you all in two weeks bye everybody